and I'm compulsive overeater. I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. I commit it to my sponsor. I don't eat between meals no matter what. I eat my meals no matter what. And God and abstinence are the most important things in my life without exception. It is a privilege to be abstinent and it is really the silver lining of my life. And I'm um, truly grateful for that. Thanks for Javi for asking me to speak. Um, I thought my day was going to be a little bit different than it, it was. I, I've been sitting until yesterday. I mean, came back 3.30 in the morning from Rhode Island. And um, I thought that I'm going to have a lot of free time on my hands. And so I offered to take this um, service position, thinking that no one's going to bother me. But I am home now. And I have two kids home. So I'm, I told them that, they, that I'm going to be busy. And I hope that they won't disturb me. But um, I want to do service, and so I was willing to do this. Um, so my abstinence really goes back to 2005, um, where I was I came into the rooms completely desperate. My life was completely unmanageable. I was um, close to 300 pounds and a little, a five, around five, three and a half, and just not being able to live my life. I was. All I did, all, all I did every day was eat and eat and eat and then get so tired, like I couldn't, I couldn't keep my eyes open and I needed to sleep and I'd get up and do the same thing over and over again in between trying to squeeze in my life. But it was really, really hard. And um, my, I always loved food. I, I even, it took me a few years to realize that, I, you know, what this whole thing was about, that I was eating over stuff. For years, I thought it was just a bad habit that I had, even while I was on the gray sheet. But, um, I, you know, when they say you put down the food and you figure out why you, why you ate, and it took me a while. Um, so, yes, I, I did crazy things when I was in the food. I mean, I stole, I stole money from my parents. Um, I used to sneak in the middle of the night and climb onto the, you know, the washing machine we had in the kitchen and get the, you know, to the top cabinet where my mother used to hide all the stuff. and. And I used to, you know, got caught a few times and I felt like a little mouse, you know, running back to my bed. And, um, but I used to steal a lot of money because I remember in third grade, my teacher asked me, I was, I had so much stuff with me. She asked me if it was my birthday party, I had so much stuff I had. And, um, and then when she took the bag from me, she saw tons of change on the bottom. I have no idea what I took and I have no idea, but it was insane. It was insane. And I'm, I'm sure I did this regularly, you know, until, um, until I stopped, thank God. Um, and I, I was always taking money. And it, even when I you know, got a little older and I wasn't taking money from them every day, I used to leave the house and my father would say, so Nahama, do you need money? And I'd say, yeah, I don't need money. And he would say, no, nah, it's very good. It's important. You should have some money with you. You, you know, you should always have a little pocket change. And every day I came home with zero cents. And he would ask me this every single day. So I used to go just spend it on the stuff that I wanted to eat. And, um, but, it, you know, I didn't get to a crazy weight, but I got pretty, you know, for a young girl, it was pretty big. And then after I got married, it went shoo, so, so, so high. And um, it became really unmanageable. And um, I hated myself. And I wanted to work, but I felt so, so terrible about myself. I didn't even want to go you know, for an interview, like who is going to take me and who's going to respect me if I can't, if I look like this. Um, I felt awful about myself. And um, the only thing that kept, you know, kept me going and kept me coping was the food. I needed it because I had no other tools and nothing else to help me. And, you know, my mother tried really hard. She was on my case all the time trying to help me lose the weight. And the more she tried lovingly to do it, the more I ate. And, um, you know, she offered to send me to the gym, to the gym. She offered to cook me food. She cut me up all colored vegetables and it never helped. You know, I'd go and, you know, trade them for the stuff that I wanted. Um, and, and I ate and I ate and I ate. And, um, yeah, so that was basically what my life was before I got into gray sheet. And then for four years I was in the rooms, but basically I feel like those four years, um, very, very, I didn't get it really, but I got enough to know that we don't eat no matter what, which was the key foundation that I needed to get 
Um, and I'm so grateful that I did because after four years, I moved to Lakewood. And after four years, I had my relapse and I moved to Lakewood, New Jersey. And I had no Gracie, you know, home meeting. But one thing I did have was the foundation that I got in Gracie of we don't eat no matter what. And so when I came here and there was no meeting, no gray sheet meeting, and I had other 12-step food meetings around, I was not going to any other, you know, I wanted the support, I wanted the fellowship, but I wasn't moving from the gray sheet because the gray sheet is freedom for me. As, as rigid as it is and the boundaries that it has, that is my freedom. Those things are my freedom. Um, it's clear, it's defined. I, I ha you know, it's, it's just, it's just what I need, for the type of eater that I am. Um, so I'm just grateful that I had that foundation and, you know, so that I don't, I don't, I don't need to look further. You know, I need, to, I know where I am. I know where I belong. I'm very grateful for that. I do, I do join um, other people. You know, I did make a fellowship here, but I have no great sheeters here and I stick to my great sheet program. And it's, you know, I know that I'm in the beginning, I, I didn't know if I should go to meetings and my sponsor said, be there to spread the message. So I am here, and there are some that I've tried, but um, you know, not. I still haven't gotten a group. I did try opening a meeting at one point; it fell through. But um, you know, I just I don't eat no matter what. And I've gone through uh, Grace Sheet before. I say what I've gone through in Grace Sheet. Um, it's taught me so much about my life, you know, and how to deal with life because I've learned to surrender things, even on the Grace Sheet. Um, at times I need to, you know, they told me I can chew gum and I chewed my head off. I chewed packs a day until I realized that this was just a substitute addiction and I couldn't manage anymore. It was my, my teeth were hurting me. My, my, I am, my, um, the taste, it didn't taste anymore. And I realized it was insane. The money was like, it was going like, you know, $20 easily a day. So I put the gum down. Thank you. Thank you, God, three years ago. And it's been a real freedom for me to be away from that. And other stuff also, you know, on the gray sheet that I've, you know, stopped and been able to learn surrender to surrender certain things because either they hurt my stomach or because, you know, or I was gaining weight or whatever it is. So this program has really taught, given me a lot, um, not only with the food, um, but also with, uh, with um, life. And, um, it, you know, it's taught me so much. As far as, um, you know, I know that I have to ask anytime I have a question. I know that I have, if I have any, you know, problem with my food, I have to ask. Um, I, I, about to call, I give my food over every single day. It's not something that, you know, we don't, we do it one day, we don't do another day, and who cares? It's something, every part of this program, even the giving over of the food is so important to me. Um, it's, uh, if I lack on anything, then I'm often, you know, I could be often and, uh, running and I know I had an experience. I know what, you know, they said that the last thing to go was the food. And I did have an experience after moving and not having a fellowship. And, you know, so I did have my slip and it was very horrible. And, um, I was out for nine months and, uh, three months of it, I was trying something else. So of the six months, I gained back 80 pounds of the 100 pounds that I had lost. And it was devastating. It was horrible. And um, I never want to go back there. I, it just, you know, it was, a, it was a good thing for me, that relapse, because it really taught me who I really, really am. And um, I'm grateful to the, you know, fellow, the fellow of this fellowship, a dear friend of mine who called me up and I picked up the phone because I was isolating completely while I was in the food. And um, I picked up the phone and she asked me how I'm doing. And I told her horrible. And I told her I'm totally in the food. I'm never going to get it. And it was, it was the moment God sent me her and I, I, I stopped eating and that was it. I never looked back. And I do this now with that, with that knowledge of what a relapse can do to me. Um, it's, it's all the more, of a reason to stay abstinent. And I just don't ever want to go back there again. It was, it was horrible. And, um, you know, horrible, even my children, they hadn't seen me for four years eating and they were young and, um, you know, they hadn't seen me eat the stuff that we don't eat. And, and they were asking me like, you know, why are you eating that? Mommies eat that. And I would say, Oh, that's disrespectful. Like I was so irritable. I was so upset. And I, you know, in the beginning I wasn't eating in front of them. And then I started eating in front of them. 
Um, anyway, going to, you know, this, this is a no matter what program and, um, I've gone, you know, had, had a baby in abstinence. I had, thank you, Lisa. Um, oh, wow. Um, I had a baby in abstinence. I married off kids in abstinence. I went to my grandchildren's births in abstinence. And those are all very nice things. Um, but then I had a lot of hardships. I, last May I was diagnosed with cancer. I, um, I separated recently. Um, my daughter is, as I said, I was in Rhode Island. My daughter is in a hospital since uh, April 14th and um, she's going through a lot and um, traveling back and forth. I still have a family, thank God, and a lot of other stuff that I went through. Um, but my food comes first. It sounds crazy, but I know that if I don't have my food, then there's nothing else that will come second. I, and, and while I was in the hospital, um, Last year, after surgery, and I, I didn't have a refrigerator in my in my room, and you know my good Rashid friends told me what to do, and they told me to bring a cooler and to have them put ice inside, and at the end of the day to replace the ice, and that's how I had my food the entire time that I was in the hospital, and then in, in rehab um, as well. So um, just you know, it can be done under crazy conditions as it, as it was. And, um, you know, people like, you know, they start saying, oh, you're going through so much. You're sure you can for one day, you know, treat yourself. People say all kinds of stuff. And, um, but I know, I know if I just start, I'm off and running and forget it. You know, there's no life for me then. And then I'm just in the food and I'm dead to everything else. So, uh, you know, and now with my daughter, I was there yesterday in Rhode Island, very painful. My daughter does not, she's very angry that I brought her to this um, hospital and she doesn't want to talk to me. And she's a young 14 year old and it's very, very painful. And, you know, I was supposed to be, you know, I was visiting her in the beginning, I was visiting her during every, you know, they had twice a day visiting hours and I was there. And then all of a sudden I'm in Rhode Island and I'm not visiting her because she doesn't want me to want to see me. So like, what am I going to do with my time? And, you know, so we, what do we do? We reach out to our fellowship and ask what to do, you know? So, um, well, yesterday I, I took the day to make food for myself in someone else's house and they gave me a shelf in their freezer and I stacked it up and, um, I took some of it back with me for the next few days, but I have really, really good, um, stock in, in the freezer over there for myself. And that's what I do, you know, to protect my abstinence because it's the most important thing in my life. You know, it's, I don't have that. I really have absolutely nothing. And um, for those who don't have support from other people, you know, it, it took, took a, a journey. You know, I, I had to really work um, and realize how important this was for me because I'm doing this for me and for myself to have a, a, a relationship with my higher power, with my fellows and with myself. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks and it doesn't matter what anyone else says, you know, it start it, it starts with me as well. You know, I have to take, you know, in this program we learn about taking care of self and then we also learn about not being self selfish and that's, and, and we just have to know when and where. And in this case, it means I have to take care of me before anyone else, because if not, I'm not there for anyone else. And I make my food delicious. I, you know, I enjoy my food. I keep, I have basically what I eat, you know, the basic things that I eat and I spend time making it. And um, sometimes if I have no time, I'll eat simple. I always know there's another meal coming. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that God is giving me this gift. Sometimes I wonder, you know, oh my God, what are you doing to me? I can't take this anymore. There's so much in my plate. But, you know, when it comes to my food plate, it's just beautiful. One more minute. Thank you, Lisa. So I'm going to end with that. One minute doesn't give me that much time. I just want to thank everybody for listening. And for thank you again for asking me to share. And I hope I've helped somebody.